Hey guys, and welcome back to Let's Play Digimon World 3. In the last part, we kind of got off to a slow start with all the tutorials and whatnot, and we kind of failed in a couple of first few battles. Uh, but I'm going to show you a little bit more about the battle system. I am going to have to do some grinding here, and I am going to, for the most part, keep it in. At this point in the game, it's better off to see some of the combat so you just get to know what is in store uh, for this point in the game. Uh, but we are kind of getting beat up a lot right now because we are such a low level. Uh, but we'll be changing that soon. If there's a trainer, I don't know if it'd be wise to fight them right now, but let's see. I'm Natsumi, a hi happy high school student. Sorry, I'm not interested in younger boys. That means we're not high enough level high enough and then he's just gonna talk about like oh what is this hole seems too big for a mole yeah those will be those come to play later as will these this game has a lot of things in the overworld overworld that come into play later such as these trees and that water these are signposts telling us where we're gonna go and then we can actually go quite a bit of areas right now uh, but since we are such low level, as you saw in the last episode, we can only do a few battles before we need to restart. At least if we don't use our tech. Once we re we can use our tech and then once we run out of our, what is it called in this one, MP. Uh, then we have to kind of switch to something else. Uh, but for now, as you can see, our techs are doing a lot of damage compared to what our normal attacks are doing. And that's pretty, it's generally how it happens, how it works. Uh, so a lot of leveling is just using your tech until you run out, and then, yeah, switch it up. Uh, okay, so when you can level up, uh, sometimes, I'm usually the type of guy who likes to go level 2, then go back to level 1, then level 1, then level 1, until they're all level 2. Uh, I guess I'm going to keep doing that, so I can show you how to sort. You take our Digimon, swap it with them. And we're back out. The menus are actually not that much faster on this emulator. At Digimon World 2, there was a big difference in menu speed and overall battle speed. Uh, they improved a lot in this game, uh, just how fast the game ran. All right, so we got a power charge. What a power charge does is an item. I think it's, I I'm not gonna remember a lot of these names for the items. I'm pretty sure it is HP, yes, heal 500. So that's what a power charge is. It's actually pretty strong, even though, because none of us gets close to 500 HP right now. Uh, but that's another thing that we're doing right now, is just getting enough uh, bit or bits to buy items so we can equip these guys and then get them a little better off than getting killed with two hits. But if we get ambushed, we immediately get attacked anyway, so it's not like... It's not like we're gonna be able to survive forever just on techs. But Swing Swing is attacking with with your uh, little crop. What am I? Why can't I think of the word? Uh, slingshot. That's it. And then taking damage, as you can see. Can't really digivolve. We could have tagged, but the experience is shared, so it's better off just to attack with one Digimon. But with the streamlined battle, it kind of does go quick. <clears throat> Digimon World 2 is probably faster training overall because of the entire team getting experience. Uh, but with the way that Digivolution works in this one, these guys that we have here... Ah, sorry about that, something was in my throat. Uh, the way the game works is we're going to actually have these Digimon through the entire game. It's just how they Digivolve that actually changes. So it kind of works differently than Digimon World 2 did. Considering you, when you did you, especially when you DNA Digivolve and you get a weaker Digimon, that's not in this game. DNA Digivolving does get you a stronger one. All the time, 100% of the time. Uh, it's just how the Digivolution system works is quite a bit different. And we could actually just go straight to Siryu, uh, but we really need to level up just a little bit. You won't be able to make it to the next town. And if you game over, it's back to the last save. It's actually back to the main menu and then you have to load up your other save. And as you can see, sometimes random encounters just don't happen, which is good if you actually want to explore. 
but we just got ambushed, which means we're not going to be able to uh, complete this battle, which is fine because we should have switched to uh, Agumon anyway. So Agumon comes in. It's going to take the brunt of this attack. The Agumon have the most damage or uh, the most defense. Yeah. Monmon's the highest attack. He's the highest defense out of the three, and Rinamon has the highest tech. Ah, I, I meant to use my freaking technique. Oh, and he blocked. That's another thing. Both of us can do this. Uh, we can evade, even though it is basically us blocking. Uh, we can evade and take no damage. Oh, and they can also attack twice if they're fast enough. Well, that sucks. I may not be able to finish this battle. Let's see how if Pepper Breath hits him hard enough. I think Kunamon's weak to fire, so... We can hope. Yeah! Yeah, do a backflip! Aw. Oh, he didn't quite level up, so I'm gonna try one more time and... get him to do, do, do sort. Usually when I play this game, as I, I, I think I mentioned in the last episode, I get these guys to like re pretty high level in just this first area before I head off. I'm not going to quite over level as much as I would through a normal playthrough unless I, something's happening where I'm really just getting my butt kicked. So if, I, if I'm getting my ass kicked that much, I probably need to over level at least stay for a while. Uh, but this early game will be the only grinding that I really leave in. But yeah, the battle system, at least a lot of it is streamlined. It's not completely slow. Come on, please go first. Yes. Should be able to take him out with one move again. Yeah. And Kunimon's gone. Should level us up. Agumon's level, what was two? <laughs> I was about to say 10, but I saw the experience. All right. Well, let's go and heal them. Yeah, the, this is, I guess, could be a downside too of this game is you start really weak, like super weak. I know most games start you out, or all games start you out pretty weak, but the fact is that you can only do a few battles before you have to go and heal. So that's like pretty slow, even in the original Pokemon games. You could get to the first city, although you could lose the first battle as well. Fighting Gary and losing was always just... Ah, it was good times. Uh, do not stay in the end. Alright, we're fully healed. Let's take a look at what the items the shop has in store for us at the moment. So, Smith's shop. As you can see, they're separated into two things. Can't get over here. Apparently, there are items you can't buy in the store. But Mr. Smith said he doesn't know about that. Well, at least not know yet. What do you have to say, Gomamon? This is the pawn shop. This is the pawn shop. What's up? All right, so the pawn shop. This has these ring things, which are kind of expensive, as you can tell. We don't need to worry about these for quite a while. Uh, the pawn shop, I guess, is for accessories like that. And then you got Wizamon, Wizardmon. He's in charge of the item shop. And then we have Gargamon, who is in charge of the armory. Let's see what they have in store for the armory. Alright, so that's what we got right here. So they have the weapons, right or left hands, both hands. And then we have defensive items. I actually really like the additions of this just because it makes it feel like more of an RPG even though the items are pretty generic. So the first thing that we really want to do is defense. Um, and if you hit zero you can see what they would add to uh, everybody's stuff. So we kind of want... Oh, That's a jacket. And see th these all go in different slots too. 
So I think the first thing we want to do is work on getting hide helmets for everybody. For now, we can get one. I usually, I don't, I don't uh, go around buying a lot of these items right away. Uh, but I'm just wanting to show as much as the beginning that I can. So that if I do have to cut out some of the grinding, I don't forget something. So we have the power charge. And then we have armor. Oh, did I not go to equip? We have to go to status. So who has the... I think Renamon has the lowest defense. Equip. For now, that'll be good. We're going to go and grind a little bit. I'll do a few more battles, get them all to level three, and then I will grind to at least five, and then we'll kind of move on until I die. And in case I do die, yeah, <laughs> I will definitely not reshow all me doing that stuff. Uh, but I guess since we do have some TP, I can tell you the training. This is the training gym. I do want to work out. Alright, so this is how we raise our stats. Now, I'm probably actually not going to do this right now, just for the simple fact that if we, like, go to the training, you can pick how much TP you want to use. Ten is usually the best, no matter what you do. I'm, I'm thinking that, if I remember correctly. And there's like a bonus uh, aspect to it that you can get like an even greater boost. So I'm actually going to wait for one more level. You, I think you always want to use 10. or yeah, Hopefully you've always wanted to use 10. If not, I've been doing it wrong all my life. I am definitely not as big of an quote-unquote expert at the game as I was in Digimon World 2. I knew a lot about Digimon World 2. Digimon World 3 I mostly played and then I never got around to doing all the extra stuff at the end freaking two attacks so I was doing 50 damage before just that level up already took 11 damage off so while we do start really weak uh, the jump in how much you gain strength wise in just one level is a lot bigger in this game than in Digimon World 2 leveling up in Digimon World 2 was almost irrelevant it was just the fact that if you DNA digivolved enough, you would stay stronger than the Digimon that are around you. That's just kind of basic sense. The stats themselves didn't really feel like they did much. In this one, they do quite a bit. It's a lot of, uh, it's a lot of stat boosting that you have to get around to just to get all the di different digivolutions. And weakness types actually do help a lot. Uh, a lot of the bosses you won't be able to see their stats, but I do happen to remember a lot of them, or at least most of the beginning. Especially the beginning. I started the game over and over again many times. I've beat it only twice, I'm pretty sure. Freaking Kunemon, he's so fast. And you see up there is a little sparkly bar. Gets reset every time we sleep in an inn, so I'm probably not going to be able to show it until we head off to Siryu. But that's called a blast bar, or a blast gauge. When it is completely full, we will warp digivolve, which is not mean digivolving into Omega, but we will digivolve into an ultimate, I believe. And that is just for a few turns. We go back to normal. Everybody's happy. And that's just kind of something that if you're getting beat the fuck down in a boss fight, that can really help you sometimes. Please don't be super fast. Oh. Well, doesn't matter if you're super fast because I'm super dumb. Since the menus are so responsive, I almost forget that I have to wait a little, or that I don't have to wait a little bit in between menu transitions. I just get to attack immediately. Yep, the game is too smooth for its own good. He's leveled up to three, I think. Yep, sweet. Five is, basically, you'll learn most of your moves or digivolutions at five intervals. Like level five, level 10, level 15, level 20. It doesn't always work that way, but it's usually, it's definitely a move, and it's sometimes a digivolution. The digivolutions might be every 10. I have to get back to you on that once we actually get around to it. 
Like I said, a lot of the mechanics I'm not 100% on. No expert at all. But that's okay. We can learn as we go. I know enough of it to get by, that's that's for sure. But yeah, we got this good old grinding. And then by the time we're level, probably level 5, we'll be able to fight this girl right here. Uh, the way they determine how strong you are and if they'll fight you is the total combination of your Digimon's level. So right now we got three, four, five, six, seven. And I think to have fight her we need a total of at least... I want to say ten, but I actually think it might be fifteen. Fuck you up with Diamond Storm. Swing. Alright, a few more battles of that, and she'll be a level 3. Uh, we could go, I guess, in hopes that I don't get too far out and die. I guess I could show you, if we had just one screen over here, uh, this screen actually can have different variations of Digimon based on where you're at. I think the Digimon here are weaker than the Digimon when you cross this bridge. But they are stronger than the last area. As I will show you, we are running into champions now. Now, you saw how much damage we were doing to those rookies in the last one. Now watch this. Keep in mind, techs are still really strong. <laughs> so, that I, I figured that it would happen to do that as soon as I said, look at how much damage we're going to be doing. It doesn't always go that easily. Trust me. Because I, I just know we're going to get into something and it's gonna we're going to get rocked. Especially if the Digimon can one-hit us before and they are faster than us. That is a bad, bad combination. Uh, but there's nothing really to do here at the moment, I believe. It may be down here where the stronger, strong, strongers are. We head over here, nothing. We talk to this guy. I'm a fisherman. Fisherman? <laughs> uh, Digimon. Tai Kong, Tai Kong Lang. How about it? If you want to fish, you need a pole, string, and a hook. Then I'll make you a fishing pole. Hmm. Where am I going to get those from? I'll probably get them eventually. Alright, so now we got a Gizamon. Boing! Shoot! Alright, so he only took half damage. And we blocked his attack. Evading... I, it's them evading is what causes the blast gauge to go up the most. Uh, otherwise, it just goes up with how much damage you take. Ah, oh, he survived. Why didn't I do enough damage? Damn it. Let's see how much damage you're going to do. Whoosh! See what I mean about damage? Now, let's see if we can kill him with this. If not... Mon Mon dumped down. Ah! Well, Gizamon's gonna take Mon Mon out. Oh, maybe not. Blocked. We're just going back and forth. And then those green dots up there are, of course, our Digimon and the status effects of said Digimon. But you can see this area is a lot more dangerous than the last area, uh, but you also get rewarded more for it. Uh, I usually tend to like to stay in the first area until we're level 5, and then we come here. Uh, but I just thought I would show this off, since it has been the entire episode, and all we've been doing is fighting. Uh, but in the next part, I'm going to show you some of the training, and I will probably just grind a little bit off camera, and then we'll head over to Siriu City. Probably have our first Tamer battle, maybe even a card battle. So, thanks for watching, and until the next episode, see you later, guys.